can you get a decent cheap work boot from Walmart? Today we're gonna to find out because I bought four different boots from Walmart ranging from $24 all the way up to $100. And we're gonna put them through a, a four test gauntlet to really test these boots to see if they're work ready. And we're gonna cut them all in half to see how they're built, to see what's on the inside, to really figure out if there's any boots worth buying from Walmart and if you can trust any of them for your work site or if they're all just a waste of money. And thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. And if you're looking at work boots, there's a good chance that you're a dude like me whose hairline has slowly been slipping back. And sometimes you just don't realize it until you're in your early 30s and your hairlines move back an inch. And that's because two out of three men experience hair loss by the time they're 35. And that's where Keeps comes in because Keeps is a subscription service that helps men keep their hair. They offer clinically proven treatments to combat the symptoms of hair loss. And the nice thing is they're delivered straight to your door. So you don't have to worry about going to the doctor or going to the pharmacy to get refills. And the treatment plans are pretty affordable, typically half the cost of the pharmacies that you'd have to be driving to to get your refills. And all the Keeps treatment plans are personalized and doctor recommended. Plus they have 24 seven support because Keeps has a network of experienced medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. And each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging so you can connect with your prescribing doctor about anything, anytime. So if you have some concerns with hair loss, be sure to check out Keeps because hair loss stops with Keeps. And to get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash Roseanville or click the link in my description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Roseanville. And thanks again to Keeps. So now let's quickly go over the boot information for each of these boots and a quick overview of all the specs and information of each of these boots. Starting with the cheapest, going to the most expensive. So starting with the cheapest boot, the brand is the Brahma. The style is the BR Raid. The color is brown. They weigh one pound, 13 ounces. They retail for $24. They're made in China. And for the rest of this video, we're gonna refer to these as the $24 boots. The upper of this boot looks like it's made from leather, but it's really just a fake leather with a cheap plastic coating on top with a leather print and coloring to make it look like leather and the problem with fake leather it splits really easily it's not as durable and it grabs dirt once you get this top layer uh, flaked off so it might be the worst material for work boots so right off the bat not impressed with the upper of this boot and the thickness of this fake leather is 1.3 millimeters thick the lining of the $24 boot is just a cheap mesh lining and the counter area on the inside, it doesn't have a counter cover. So that cheap fabric is eventually gonna wear out pretty quickly and you're gonna have a big hole in the heel of your boot. And the tongue is gusseted really, really low on this boot. So you're not gonna have a whole lot of water and dirt protection from getting stuff on the inside of your boot. The construction of this boot is more than likely just a cemented construction. It's probably just a single sole glued onto the upper which isn't great for work boots because once you get them hot, they start to delaminate and your whole boot falls apart. The insole of this boot is a really thin but pretty decent foam insole. I'm actually impressed with it for the $24 price point. The outsole of this boot is just a hard rubber outsole with a durometer of 74 short A. And we don't really know what the midsole is because we don't know what's on the inside of this boot. And as for the attributes that they have on the box, it says steel toe, oil resistant sole plate. I guess that means the sole. I've never heard it re referred to as a sole plate. And it says it's slip resistant. And for the fit, fill, and look, these are pretty hard underfoot. And they, they're made to look kind of like a laced toe boot. It's just kind of a weird, wonky looking boot. Next to the mock toe looking boots. So the brand is Herman Survivor. The style is the Oak Ridge. The color is brown. They weigh one pound, 12 ounces. They retail for $59 and they're made in China. And for the rest of this, this video, we're just gonna call them the mock toe boots just to make it easier. So the upper of this boot is a real leather upper. It's a, probably a chrome tan leather, but the problem is they put a fake plastic coating on top and emboss a, a fake leather print to make it look like a higher quality leather. And the thickness of this leather is about two millimeters thick, so not bad for a work leather. Usually you'll see anywhere from two millimeters up to 2.5 all the way up to three millimeters for some heavier du duty work boots. The lining of this boot is the exact same as the $24 boots, just a different color, and it also does not have a, a counter cover. But the tongue is gusseted up to that first speed hook, so you get a little bit more coverage with the tongue. And the construction of this boot, it says on the box it's a Goodyear welted boot, and a really easy way to tell if it is a Goodyear welt 
is if you pull that upper away from the welt, if you see glue, it's usually a fake Goodyear welt, but if there's no glue and you can kind of see a little separation, usually that means it's a Goodyear, a real Goodyear welted boot. So this one does look like it's a, a real Goodyear welt, but the welt is a synthetic welt, which I'm not a huge fan of because it doesn't have that internal fiber structure that leather has that gives it that extra strength and durability and flexibility. So after a while, you step on this boot over and over, flex it, it hardens that plastic and eventually splits which can cause your boot to fail. But more importantly, it makes it a lot harder to resole the boots. And next to the insole, it's the exact same as the $24 boot, not bad. And underneath both of these boots, the Mock Toe and the $24 boot, you can see that there's just a cardboard lasting board, which is the, the absolute cheapest lasting board you can buy. Cardboard is such a bad material that as you flex that boot, just like we talked about with the welt, that slowly compresses and separates and starts uh, pulling apart the layers of that cardboard and eventually you have a, a split right across the middle of your boot, which is horrible for comfort and longevity. The outsole on this one is really interesting because it's a soft, a really soft blown rubber outsole and it's probably the softest wedge sole I've ever seen. It comes in at a 44 Shore A, which is way too soft for a work boot. It'd be like on a work site, this would probably last two weeks before this heel is completely shaved off. And as for the midsole, it just looks like it's a hard plastic midsole that that welt is sewn to. As for its box attributes, it says it has a steel toe, it's leather, Goodyear welt, oil and an oil resistant sole plate. So sole plate must mean sole. I just have never heard that term before. And the fit, feel and look of this boot, it's clearly modeled after the, the classic work mock toes like the thorough goods and the red wings it's made to look just like those but for a lot cheaper and they are pretty comfortable underfoot because of how soft the outsole is next to these very timberland looking boots the brand is herman survivor the style is driller the color is wheat they weigh two pounds five ounces they retail for 74 dollars and they're made in china and for the rest of this video, we're just gonna call them the fake Tims because that's exactly what they are. The upper of this boot is made from a waterproof Nubuck leather, which is chrome tanned and it's about two millimeters thick. And the lining of this boot is a little bit upgraded from these previous two boots. It's a little bit tighter mesh. It looks like it's a little bit more durable, but it still does not have anything in the heel counter area to prevent your heel from wearing through that cheaper fabric. And as for the tongue, it is gusseted pretty low again. It's to this fourth eyelet right there, which is pretty low for a work boot. And the construction of this boot, it looks like it's a direct injected or a uh, direct attached construction where the upper is fused to the outsole during the curing process. But we'll see when we get it cut in half. And the insole is, is an upgraded version of the previous two outsoles. It's a very similar feel, but it's just a lot thicker. Underneath the insole, we don't really know what the lasting board material is because this boot has a waterproof lining in it and that lining usually wraps underneath of the insole. So now we can't see what the lasting board is made out of. And the outsole of this boot is really, really similar to the real Timberlands where you've got the dual density with the harder uh, material. We, they don't say if it's rubber or not anywhere in their branding or their packaging. So I'm assuming it's rubber, but they don't actually say. You've got that harder rubber outsole with this softer foam midsole. The durometer of the harder rubber is 69 Shore A and the softer uh, foam is 24 Shore A. So really, really soft, like so almost too soft for a work boot. It, it makes me concerned about its durability and how it's attached to the boot. And as for its box attributes, it's got the Enduro Pro Insight footbed, a waterproof full grain leather, steel anti-puncture plate. So there must be a, a steel plate on the inside of this boot that runs the length of the sole. Oil and slip resistant outsole and high visibility panel. That's That kills me. This, these like little panels they put on these cheap boots for high visibility. So dumb. And as for the fit, fill, and look, clearly a fake Timberland. And they are really soft underfoot. That, that 24 Shore A foam does you a lot of favors in the comfort. Finally, to the $100, our most expensive work boot that you can buy at Walmart. The brand is Herman Survivor. The style is the Dozier. The color is brown. They weigh two pounds, 14 ounces. They retail for $99 and they're made in China. And for the rest of the video, we're gonna just call this the $100 boot to make it easier. And the upper of this boot is made of a bunch of different materials. The leather itself is a pretty decent leather. It looks like it's a an oil tanned or a, a oil infused leather, which is really good for work because it doesn't take nearly as much care and conditioning. It's, and they say that the, the leather is waterproofed and that it has a waterproof lining on the inside. So we'll see when we get to the water test. And it has a fair amount of fabric and synthetic materials. Like the toe has this, this rubber toe guard. It's got a fake 
leather plasticky and it's got this fabric that runs up the shaft of the boot and the thickness of the leather on this boot is 2.5 millimeters thick the thickest out of all these boots and a lot closer to what you would actually want in a work boot leather thickness the lining of this boot is the same material as the fake tims and the insole is the same as well and it also does not have that counter cover on the inside so that's probably gonna be the first fail point is at that heel on all these boots. On this boot, at least the tongue is gusseted up to this eyelet. And the construction of this boot is a Goodyear welted construction and it has a, a synthetic welt just like the mock toe. So it probably will eventually split, but it is a hundred bucks. And the outsole of this boot is a dual density outsole where you've got that harder rubber layer. And then above that, you've got a layer of this softer foam. The rubber comes in at 75 short A and the softer foam is about 56 which is a lot closer to what I would expect from a real work boot, unlike these softer, these ridiculously soft foam we've seen in some of these other boots. For the box attributes, sorry bud, we got a big old laundry list. We've got Enduro Pro PU Insight Footbed Waterproof Full Grain Leather, still anti-puncture plate, so this one must have a, a, a plate on the insole too. Uh, reinforced rubber toe, oil and slip resistant outsole, welt construction, and high visibility panels. Most importantly, that high visibility panel, important. And for the fit, fill, and look, these are pretty comfortable boots, but they are really, really heavy. So now that we've gone through the basic information about these boots, let's run our four scientific tests to see how these boots stack up. So we're gonna do a waterproof test, a puncture test, a drop test, and a flame test. So let's start with the waterproof test. So first, we just dribbled a little bit of water on the uppers to see how water resistant the leather is. And as you can see, all of them performed really well, except for the $100 boot. This leather grabbed onto that water right off the bat and soaked it into the leather. So clearly this leather isn't waterproof. Next, we're gonna do the actual waterproof test. So we're gonna just submerge these in water for five minutes and see what happens. The two cheaper boots in the $24 boot and the mock toe failed pretty miserably. There's water on the inside. And the two boots that have the waterproof membrane, the fake Tims and the $100 boot passed pretty well. And, and even though the, the $100 boot didn't get water on the inside, it still absorbed some of the water like we did with the dribble test. So what we did is we weighed the boots before and weighed them after to see how much water they actually absorbed. So as you can see from this graph, they all absorbed some water and the fake leather boots absorbed the most water and they took the longest to dry. It took like three days for these boots to dry. Next is the puncture test and we're gonna simulate stepping on a nail by mounting a, a nail inside of the drill chuck that I have mounted inside of my Arbor Press that we use for leather working. And we put a scale underneath of the press to measure how many pounds it takes to actually push through the sole. So the $24 boots once again performed the worst at 48 pounds. The mock toes were next at 91 pounds. The fake Tims were 192.5 pounds. And the $100 boots performed the best at 217 pounds to pierce through the sole. And it's important to remember that the, the fake Tims and the $100 boots both have that steel plate running all the way through the sole. So even if you did step on a nail at 200 pounds and it would pierce through the sole, there's a good chance that steel plate would stop it. Next, we're gonna test the steel toes on each of these boots. So first, what we have to do is cut the steel toes off. And to test these steel toes, we built a contraption directly ripped off from my one of my favorite YouTube channels, Project Farm. He did a similar test and his uh, testing apparatus was so good that we just directly copied it. So if you don't, if you haven't seen Project Farm, I'll put a link to his channel in the description. If you like my stuff, you'll love his. And you probably already know about his channel because he's way bigger than me. But basically what we did is we, we took a three foot piece of railroad rail and mounted it in a track, lifted it up with the engine crane and did, had a little quick release so that we could drop that directly on the steel toe and put little carrots inside of the steel toe just like Project Farm to simulate your toes. So it's basically a guillotine 
four smashing boots. So to thank Project Farm for completely ripping him off, we're calling it the Project Farm Schmiatine. So now let's do a quick control test so you can see what it actually would do to a non steel toe boot. Two. And as you can see, quite violent. So now let's run the test on the steel toes. Two, one. So they all deformed about the same amount, which was surprising to me because I thought the cheaper boots were going to perform the worst and maybe fail pretty quickly. But then I realized that they're all the ASTM certified, so they have to meet a certain standard. And we dropped that 120 pound railroad rail at about 30 inches, which is about what you would drop something stupidly heavy on your toe on accident from that height. So as far as I can tell, your toes are about are going to be about as safe or about in the same amount of danger in all these boots. So now let's get to my favorite test, the flame test. And for this test, what we're gonna do is take a propane weed burner and direct the heat and flames on the boot for five seconds to not only test the materials, but the thread that holds the boot together. Because there's a lot of job sites where you're gonna be around open flames and you don't want a boot that's just gonna melt or start on fire or completely disintegrate because the thread's burned out. So let's burn these boots and run the test. So the, the $24 boots performed surprisingly well. That's because these boots took so long to dry. We had to run this test while these boots were still damp after like two days after the, the water dunking test. So here's some B-roll once these are dry after I've recorded this to really put these to the test. next to the mock toes. So these performed pretty well, except for that plastic coating on top of the leather. That plastic coating shrunk and burnt and caused the boots to deform. And the thread also melted pretty easily. But for the most part, these boots performed surprisingly well for a sub $100 boot being hit with direct flame. The fake Tims probably performed the best out of all these boots because there is no plastic coating on top, but the threads definitely disintegrated and this high visibility patch obviously failed, but they performed pretty well because it is just leather. And finally to the $100 boots. So these ones failed pretty miserably because of the synthetic materials. That, these, this like little bit of synthetic material just lit up, started dripping and melting. And that's a little bit concerning if you're gonna be around open flame because you definitely do not want your boots melting onto your feet. But the thread did perform pretty well. And out of all the leathers, this, this leather performed the best because it has so much oil and conditioner worked into it. It's the most flame resistant, but I still would choose the Timberlands because of this synthetic material completely melting off the boot. So now you have an idea of how these are going to perform in extreme work conditions. Let's cut them in half and see what's on the inside.
After completely torturing these boots, we've got them cut in half, so let's see what's inside. So the $24 boots are just complete garbage. There's literally just that single piece outsole that's full of voids, it's really thin and cheap with a shank and a piece of cardboard underneath your foot. Terrible, stay away from them. And the, the thing is for $24, you can go to a thrift store and find a higher quality used work boot that's gonna last a lot longer and be a lot better boot. And if that worries you, I have a, a video on how to buy a, a used pair of thrifted boots, so check out that video. And don't buy these $24 boots, they're absolutely terrible. The mock toes have this foam filling underneath the Goodyear welt topped with a cardboard tile, uh, style fiberboard. It's a little bit higher quality than the $24 boots, but not by much. And they are really good you're welted which is nice but there's no shank in this thing and this outsole is so soft that this just isn't a viable work boot if you're wanting to use it for longer than like a week the the fake tims are a direct attached construction where it's injection molded together unlike the cemented 24 dollar boots which is good to see and you can see the steel plate that's running the length of the boot on the inside that helps with that pr puncture protection. And now we can see that it is fiberboard underneath of the insole, which is a lot better than the cardboard. It's still not the best, but for the price point, it's fine. And you can see that there is a big block of harder foam in the heel, which is, is good because this, this midsole foam is so stinking soft that your heel would completely sink into that and, and cause some instability in your heel. And you can also see that it, it does have a waterproof lining on the inside. The only major issue I see with this boot is the thickness of this rubber outsole. It's pretty thin and compared to the Timberlands, here's a shot of it compared to the Timberlands, it's quite a bit thinner. And the problem with that is once you've worn through that at the heel or at the toe, you just have that really soft 24 Shore, almost liquid foam on the inside that's just gonna completely disintegrate once you've worn past that harder rubber. So it's, it's not a deal breaker and I think this is the first boot that might be worth the money and might be worth considering for a really budget boot. But keep that in mind, once you wear through that rubber, this, this boot's near the end of its life cycle. And finally to the $100 boot. So this boot basically combines the best attributes that we saw in the mock toes and the fake Timberlands because it has the Goodyear welt that's a real Goodyear welt. It's, it's got that waterproof lining and it has that dual density outsole with the harder rubber on the bottom with the softer rubber on the inside. And it is a little bit thicker than the Timberlands, but not by a, by a lot. And on the inside, it has that steel plate, a foam filling that fills the void of the Goodyear welt. It's got the fiberboard, that waterproof lining, and everything else that we've seen in these other boots that are good. The only problem is there, there's so much inside of this boot. For a work boot out in the, the sun working construction, I, I just feel like this would be a really, really hot boot to wear all day, every day. I would just rather spend a little bit more money to buy a full leather boot, like a pair of thorough goods or something that doesn't have all these materials and linings that are gonna wear out and just buy a really simple constructed leather boot rather than synthetic everything. So I would say if you only have $100 to spend and you can only get a pair of boots from Walmart, you might be happy with these boots. I think they'll work just fine as a really affordable work boot. Do I think they're gonna be as durable and long lasting as a $150 to $200 work boot? Probably not, and it is just more of a gamble because it's not a reputable brand. It's a Walmart brand that's I'm, I'm sure is white labeled, and it's just a bit of a gamble. So the takeaways from this video, is there a difference between the price points of Walmart boots? Clearly there is. It ranges from garbage to acceptable. And, and I would suggest just never paying anything under $75 for a boot that you want to have some decent durability out of. We just see it time and time again. These, these boots under $75 just cut so many corners and are made of such terrible materials that you end up losing your money that you could have just invested in a higher quality boot. And if you only have $75 to spend, just maybe wait till your next paycheck to where you can buy something from one of these more reputable brands like Georgia, Georgia Boot has some affordable work boots. Ariat's got a bunch of good work boots and we've reviewed some of these other work boots. So let me know what you think of this video. And if you like this style of video, these videos are a lot more expensive to make and they're several times uh, more labor intensive to make because we have to build these testing apparatuses and 
film all this different stuff so I could really use your support in getting this video into the algorithm if you did like it. So if you could just take a second and like the video, comment below on what you thought of this video, and more importantly, subscribe to the channel because that's the number one thing that's free for you to do. It's just one little click and it makes all the difference in the world. Thanks for watching, see ya.